Well, we're getting our first snow of the year. I went to start the 1025R, maybe do a little snow removal, turn the key, click, 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 click. Typical sign of maybe your battery is dead. I'm gonna show you very quickly in this video how to do some quick diagnosis and how to replace your battery, as well as what type of battery you need in case you wanna shop for other batteries outside of John Deere. So here's what I'm getting on the tractor. Turn the ignition on, you hear the fuel pump like you normally would. The glow plugs are doing their thing. Go to start it. Just clicks. Okay, so if this is what's happening to you, here's the first thing you want to do. Open your hood. So on the 1025R and the 1023, also the 2025R, uh, the battery is up here in front of the radiator. And take a look at those terminals. You can see mine has a little bit of corrosion on them. John Deere replaced this battery for me under warranty like when the tractor was brand new. One of the things that they didn't do and that I didn't realize until later on was they didn't install the vent hose. So I've had some battery acid leak out of here into the bottom of this compartment. The first thing you want to do is take off the battery cables, clean the connectors on the end, and clean the terminals on the battery. Put them back on, and if you're still having the same trouble, you might want to further investigate that battery. And I've already loosened my uh, connections for the battery, but I haven't loosened the battery itself. So there is a bungee that is connected on both sides. You're going to want to remove that. I'm going to go ahead and take off my cables. I did previously loosen my battery connection, so that's something you're going to need to do as well. Let's let those hang to the side. Now if you have the stock John Deere battery, you might have a strap on here. And that strap is right there. It was hanging on the side, but you just pull it up to the top and that's what you're going to use to pull the battery out. However, the way that John Deere designed this, you have to take off one of the headlights in order to remove the battery. So I'm going to show you how to do that. The first thing you want to do is remove the connector here from the wiring harness and just put it to the side. Uh, this is kind of like a reverse or a female Torx bit. Uh, what you need here. So I found this on Amazon. It was pretty cheap. I'll put a link down in the description This is just a small set All right, so in this set This is an e5 socket That's what's gonna fit this to remove this headlight. We need to remove these studs here So I'm going to use my e5 socket that I just showed you Okay, so after you've got those studs loosened and removed there we're basically going to angle this side out and pull the headlight this way. Just like that. Okay, now that that headlight's out of the way, we're going to grab the strap from the battery and just pull it up. Bring it over here. Now it is a tight fit, no doubt. Who would design something like this? I know that this can be done by taking just one headlight off because I've seen other people do it that way. However, just to give myself some more room, I'm going to go ahead and remove these studs on the other headlight so I can take it out of the way as well. There we go. There's a lot of stuff competing for your space in there. So now we've got the old battery out of there. You can go to your John Deere dealer and buy another Strongbox battery, which is their brand. What I did was I got this Everstart battery from Walmart. This is group size 51R, which is the appropriate size. If you do your research on batteries, you'll see there's only really a few manufacturers of all battery types being sold all over the place. Uh, these Walmart batteries were made by Johnson Controls and then they got acquired by another company. The company that acquired Johnson Controls was Clarios, so they continue to make this battery line and they sell it under a lot of different names. So anyhow, what I'm trying to say is these batteries are just as good as anyone else's. And they're cheaper, and if you have to exchange it, it's pretty hassle-free. Next thing I'm going to do is clean these terminals a little better on the cables. Um, I have this product here. It's from CRC. It's battery cleaner. Um, this is something that works pretty decent. It's in a spray can, you spray it on. I'll do that on both, both sides here. 
and it's essentially going to neutralize any battery acid or corrosion and all that good stuff. So using a product like this CRC battery cleaner, um, it works. You can also use something as simple as just boiling hot water. Or you can also use water with a baking soda mixture. All right, now after I've let that cleaner sit on there for a little bit, I'm just going to take some hot water, rinse those off. Same with the other side. Okay, so next I'm going to drop the new battery into place. You just kind of want to get the cables and stuff out of the way best as you can. battery will go down into a uh, bottom compartment uh, that's the bottom of this front area here and it'll fit right into place. So next we're going to attach our battery cables. Now I know it might seem stupid to have to say this but you kind of have to say it. You got to remove these caps. I've seen people put their battery cables on there without remo removing the caps and then they wonder why nothing works. On this side, I'll get that one on. This side, we'll get this one on. All right, so I got another product here that I like to use. This is CRC Battery Terminal Protector. The spray's on there on the, both of the terminals and battery cables, and it'll kind of give it like a red coating, and that helps to prevent any future corrosion. I'll put a link to this in the video description as well. Okay, now you're at a point where it's probably a good time to reattach the bungee used to hold the battery down. Just attach it on both sides. There's some loops that you put it through. Okay, now that we're at this point, we're going to put our headlights back in. Basically slide it back into the area where it was originally. And then we're going to screw those studs back in. Once that's slid in there on the left of the screen, now we're going to do the studs over here. All right. Once you have both your headlights back in there, you're going to reconnect the wiring harnesses to your bulbs. All right, so that wasn't the easiest battery change I've ever done, but it also isn't the worst. It's not that bad if you follow those steps. Taking out the headlights isn't that big of a deal. It's just kind of a minor inconvenience. All right, so now that the battery's in there, let's try and start it. All right, if you're a one series owner and you like these types of videos, I make videos about my 1025R as well as my other tractors. If you're not already, subscribe to my channel, leave the video a like, and let me know down in the comments if this video helped you out. If you have any suggestions on doing it better, leave those down there too. Other people can learn from it as well. Thanks for watching Tractor Hoarders. I'll see you later.